Hello, my friends. Happy Friday. Welcome to episode 63 of Why Did I Buy This? This series started as a way to help my crafters find unique ways to use their craft supplies. It's also a great series for my new crafters who are wondering what they should purchase to be successful with their crafting. My name is Lindsay and I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator now for over 18 years and I love to teach and I love to craft. So this has been a very fun series for me because I am a huge fan of techniques and I get to showcase a lot of techniques while we're doing Why Did I Buy This? Uh, you can find me on social media here on my Facebook page. You can also find me on Instagram with at Inky Thumbs. You can find me on YouTube with just by searching my name, Lindsay Mann, M-A-H-O-N, and I have a blog, cloud9stampers.com. I'm also the team leader for the team Cloud9Stampers, and I have a really fun group of demonstrators who like to craft and have that in common, and um, they're just a great supportive group of people. Hello, Deanna. Hello, Mary. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 63. It is a hot day here in Edmonton, which doesn't happen all that often, but we are in like a heat wave where they're genuinely saying, you know, stay in the air conditioning and um, keep your pets in out of the sun. So yeah, weird. And I think it's supposed to be hot for about a week. So I'm grateful that my new house has air conditioning because I'm feeling pretty comfortable right now. <laughs> So you know what that means, it's Friday. You get to have iced coffee, and then we're gonna have some Prosecco and pizza tonight. Who else has some, some Friday night dinner plans? Let me know in the comments. Now as a reminder, the best compliment you can give me is to share this video, because that means that you want to share it with your friends. And if you share it now, you can watch it together live, which is almost like getting to hang out and craft together. Almost, not quite, but almost. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to chit chat in the comments. Um, yeah, please say hi. Tell me where you're tuning in from. If you're watching the replay, let me know that you're watching the replay. It's always fun to see who my friends are. All right, let's get started. So episode 63 is about a very basic product. In fact, if you saw my little picture with it, you're like, uh, yeah, why are we talking about clear blocks? So. Clear blocks are one of the basic essential foundational items for stamping. You aren't going to be able to use our stamp sets without having a set of clear blocks. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the foundational purpose, which duh, but I'm also gonna show you all the cool techniques that you can do with blocks. I know, it seems weird, but it is a really fun thing to be able to do. So we're gonna do the awkward transition. I'm gonna show you my hands and we're gonna get started with some crafting. So I'm gonna just get on my stand and... Okay, so I already have the full set of clear blocks on my desk here. So the clear blocks, you can find them in the Stampin' Accessories section of the catalog. And you can see there are nine different sizes. They range in price from $5.50 all the way up to $16.25, depending on the size. And you can buy the whole block bundle for a 10% discount of $96.75. So the thing about clear blocks is you might be guessing, well, what size do I need? So the beauty of our catalog is it actually tells you which sizes you'll need for the stamp sets. So it'll say here, um, clear blocks, A, B, D, E, and H. Now the thing is you can always work bigger with smaller stamps, but you get more control when it's sized better. Now you might be like, whoa, how do I know what kind of block they are? So if you look on the very edge, it's a little hard to tell in the video, but there is a letter on the edge and it says B. So this is a B block. The smallest one is the A block. This one is a uh, G block and then they move up, so all nine letters. Um, I find that if you're only gonna have one block, I would recommend this one. So this is the E block, and I always say E for everything. Most stamps are going to fit on this block. You're going to be working bigger, so like your block will be bigger than the stamp on a lot of things, but if you are working on a budget and you just need one block, go ahead and get yourself an E block, and then you can build from that. So. Looking at a stamp set, here we've got Beauty of Friendship, which we're going to use on our first card. I'm going to open it up, and this is a photopolymer set, so this is one of the clear ones. You just go ahead and peel off your stamp, and you can stick it onto the block, 
and then it's ready for you to go ahead and use. Once you clean your stamp, you can peel it back off and then stick it into your stamp set so that you can store it. So it really clean and easy. It makes it so that our stamp cases are nice and skinny. They're DVD size, so any DVD holder is going to help you be able to store them. And these are going to make it so that you can just use and reuse. I have multiple sets of blocks because when I'm working with classes, it's helpful to be able to not have to reposition stamps every time. But if you're a solo crafter, especially if you're getting started, you can really make it work with just a few blocks. But you guys already know all of this. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna show you some really, really cool things that you can actually do with blocks. Now you guys know I love, love, love techniques. So block, clear blocks are one of, the tech, one of my most used technique products in my classroom. And I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can use them today. So the first way that we're going to use the block is as a stamp, which I know sounds weird, but yeah, we're gonna use it as a stamp. So I'm just going to double check my size, yes. So I'm gonna bring in my D block, another well-used block in my classroom. I'm going to pull out, oh, surprise, surprise, pool party. And we're going to ink it up as if it's a stamp. So this whole block now has become a stamp. I'm going to bring in my alcohol, happy Friday. Oh, and look at I'm almost out. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. Let me just grab a different bottle of alcohol. And not the fun kind, because we don't waste on that, right? Uh, here we go, another bottle of alcohol. So we're just gonna go ahead and give that a spray, a couple sprays, and then we're going to flip that over and stamp it onto our basic white cardstock. So we've just gone ahead and used that as a stamp. And then you can use some sort of cloth to clean off the excess. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with a G block. Let me just have one that doesn't have a stamp on it. And this time I'm going to use old olive and we're gonna do the same thing. So stamp it and spritz it. And then we're going to add that to the basic white. Okay, so that's the first way that you can use the block. So let me show you how we're going to pull this together. First of all, I'm just gonna speed up my drying process with a heat tool. So I'm just going to make sure that all that extra alcohol that we added to the paper is drying because we wanna get, we're gonna stamp over it and we wanna get a nice crisp image. But already you can see, you can do some really fun geometric things with just the blocks. Like look at how beautifully that's stamped. Next, we're going to bring in some stamps from that beauty of friendship. So this was a new stamp set in our annual catalog. And for the nature lovers out there, this is gorgeous. I'll start with old olive because that's the lighter of the two greens we're gonna work with here. And I've pulled in the more solid of the two um, tree stamps. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that over top of our block. Next, I'm going to bring in the more detailed layer. So this is a two-step stamp. And I'm using garden green as my second layer because it's a darker green. So I'm going to just line it up as best as I can and stamp that over top of the image. So now we get that amazing look. Same with the um, little block here. I'm going to bring in my memento ink and we're going to take a greeting from that same stamp set and we're going to stamp thinking of you right in the middle of that. So let me show you the finished card and how that came together to make such a neat and different look. So first of all, I'm gonna shut my ink pads because you guys, if you've been following along, you know um, I have a tendency to drop things into the ink if I don't shut them. So we're gonna just avoid any accidents today. And here is the finished card. So you can see there are those beautiful block backgrounds that we've created and we've just added a little heart from my detailed heart dies. I think they're retired, are they? Somebody, somebody tell me if they are, but I can't get rid of them. Um, added some of my basic linen thread. And if you look closely in the background, you can see a new embossing folder. This one is probably geared more towards Christmas. However, um, this just worked so nicely with that beauty of See, if the ink pad would have been open, this would have for sure gone face down in it. 
um, it works really, really nicely with the Beauty of Friendship stamp set. So a nice simple card, but it really has the look of layers all done with ink because of your clear blocks. So that's technique number one. Let's move on to the next project. This one, this technique, was inspired by my friend Lisa Althaus. She gave me a, um, a swap a bazillion years ago that was done with this technique, and I just can't stop using it now. Um, and I need a piece of waste. Let me just grab that. So the, this particular um, project, we're going to use our clear block as a palette, and I'm bringing in three colors. Okay. You guys know I love Coastal Cabana and Granny Apple Green, but this one has really popped into my, my rotation recently, and that is Shaded Spruce. Are there any other Shaded Spruce fans out there? Let me know in the comments because I actually didn't appreciate how amazing Shaded Spruce is and how great it looks with my favorite colors. So I'm, I'm really sorry, Shaded Spruce, that I've been ignoring you because it really is such a beautiful green. So I'm going to scribble right over top of that block, and this is the H block. I'm bringing in Coastal Cabana, and then I'm using Granny Apple Green. So we're making basically our own spectrum pad. Now we're going to give it a spritz with that alcohol. Oh, Carrie like shaded spruce, yes, my friend. And now we're going to stamp that, oh, I'm gonna turn it this way. Now we're gonna stamp that right onto our basic white, like so. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, so you can see it's created like this, this amazing tie-dye kind of look, which is like, hello, beautiful. So now we're gonna bring in those coordinated, blah, 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 coordinating ink pads. I've got myself some shaded spruce. And this is from the stamp set, Love of Leaves. So this carried over from our winter catalog last year. And it is a stamp set that I didn't have before, but now I have it because it is such a great technique set. But what I love is this balsam poplar leaf, which looks like this, but when you turn it like this, it looks kind of like a heart. So I'm going to stamp a couple in the shaded spruce beautiful color then we're going to bring in our coastal cabana so again the nice thing about this is we're creating layers with ink as opposed to paper which is kind of a fun different way to create texture on your projects and then finally we're going to bring in granny apple green so we're going to stamp a couple like that too Ooh, hello that looks so good Okay, so now let me show you the finished project so you can see just a little bit of the embellishment that we've added to that. And I really love this greeting. Hope changes everything. So I've added a little bit of splatter to it, added the greeting, and then pulled from my rhinestone collection to be able to add and coordinate to the different leaves. Yeah, isn't that pretty? I love it too. So that's technique number two. So we're creating a watercolor palette using your clear blocks. So let's move on to the final card. And what kind of card is this? The PYP card. Yes, my friends, this is the pee your pants card. Just Jade cardstock. And we are going to bring in that H block again. And this time we're going to use markers and we're going to create a palette again, but this is gonna be different than I've ever showed you before. So I'm starting with the Evening Evergreen, and I've showed you this splatter technique before, so you're literally just taking off the lid, and then you're using the brush end, and just gently you're pushing it against the top of the lid, and it creates a splatter effect, and we're using the block as our palette. So that's the first color. Then we're going to move on to the, um, which one is this one? Just Jade. So again, splatter, splatter, splatter. And then I'm going to bring in my very favorite little ex accent marker. That's the stamp and Chalk marker. And guess what? You can do this with the stamp and Chalk marker too. Do you see that? Look at the white splatter that's created there. Ah! That was a fun discovery. So now I'm going to bring in my cardstock. We're going to flip this over and we're going to stamp it 
onto the cardstock, and there you have the transfer of the splatter. So why would you do that? If you're somebody who is trying to control the splatter so that it's not going all over your page, that's the way that you're going to be able to do it. And you'll see that it actually concentrates it onto the paper in the center, which gives you a really fun feel instead of it had, like it feels like you have more control with the splatter. So we're going to use this as a decorative band on our project. Now, if you watched uh, two episodes ago, I was showing projects using the Count On Me stamp set. And this stamp set is definitely a go-to now for me. These little creatures are so, so cute. And I just can't get enough of being able to color them. So we're gonna do another technique with our clear blocks. And that is we're going to create a paint palette. So I'm going to bring in my markers and I'm going to start with, which one? Uh, I'm going to use Just Shade and Shaded Spruce. But I'm not going to be coloring my bear that color, I'm going to color the clothes. So this is a trend that I've been seeing on Instagram and I think this is so brilliant. So you can actually dress up our little forest creatures. So the way that you do it is you're going to take your uh, permanent marker, so I'm just using a Sharpie, and I'm going to bring it along the edge of my bear like that. And then I'm going to give a little strap so that it looks like our bear is wearing overalls. So this is just going to pull down and connect underneath. And then we're going to connect along the edge like this. So it looks like he's got little overalls on. And then down below, we're going to give little cuffs of the pants. So that's all you have to do to give the bear a little outfit. Isn't that cute? So yeah, I've been, I didn't come up with this idea. I'm, I've been seeing it on Instagram. A few different people have posted about it, but that is just so, so fun. So now we're going to create a palette. So using Just Jade, we're going to color directly onto our block. And now I'm going to bring in my water painter and we're going to pick up that color. And we're going to go ahead and watercolor. This is just basic white, so don't worry. It doesn't have to be watercolor paper. Sometimes I like to use basic white because it's just a cleaner look. So we're gonna watercolor on our little bear, just like that. And the key to good watercoloring is you want to be able to, um, you want to be able to let it dry in between so that you don't have any of the colors running together. So we're just going to wipe off the brush and I'm going to switch to coloring my bear. So I'm going to bring in soft suede and I'm going to color some soft suede up in this corner. And then I'm going to use my water painter and I'm going to start down by the neck and we're gonna color in some of the bear. So just in some of those areas that we think would be darker, so like under the chin. And then we're gonna pull in a little bit more. I like to keep around their face a little bit lighter. It just kind of helps draw attention to the face, like that. And same with on the arms. So pick up some more ink, just like that. And then on the feet, like that. So that should be enough time to dry the overalls for our bear. So I'm going to clean my brush again. And then I'm going to add a little bit of darker green. So this one is the Evening Evergreen. So I'm going to use that. And of course this particular stamp has already drawn in some of the shading, which is very cool. So we're gonna just follow that shading down around his little tail and along his bum and on his knee there, right? And then kind of up around the shoulders just like that and then I clean my brush again and this is where you're going to give a little bit of blending so now we can kind of pull from the color that we've laid down this is kind of like when we use our blending um, Stampin' Blends right where you kind of use the brush itself to blend it out while it's still a little bit damp but look at how it's just creating that look that's just so so pretty so now we've got an animal with a face, right? So we need to add some cheeks to it. So I'm going to use my flirty flamingo, make sure that I don't have any green left in my water painter and pick that up. And we're going to add some cheeks to the little bear. We're also going to use that to color in the heart so that it's got a little watercolor heart that it's holding just like that. So you can like continue layering as much as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just 
um, dry this really quickly so that I can show you the next step. But isn't that fun? So our little bear is wearing these cute little overalls and it just makes it like over the top adorable. So that's using our clear block as a paint palette. So this is where we're gonna just kind of go over the top with this because this is a PYP card. So you guys know everything about PYP is extra, right? So we're just gonna go one more time with the heat tool here just to make sure we've got both sides dry. And once it's dry enough, we're going to bring back in my favorite accessory marker, the Stampin' Chalk marker. And this time we're going to go like this and we're going to add polka dots all over this little jumper so that it looks like a little girl bear. This would make a great baby card actually. That's not the theme I used on this one, but I'm just adding randomized dots all the way along. Yeah, it does look like an illustration from Peter Rabbit. You're right, Jennifer. Um, they're just so cute, aren't they? And now I wanna give clothes to all the animals. It's like becoming an addiction, I think. So we're gonna keep doing our little dots all the way around. So now look at how cute the bear's outfit is. Is that not ridiculous? Oh, it's so cute. So um, the next step, we're gonna do another technique with our clear blocks. Yeah, I know, this is, this is over the top today. And I'm going to bring in those same three greens that we used before, and we're gonna use that block again. So I'm just going to use a um, little wipe and wipe that off. So we're gonna do the same thing as before where we're using our lids and we're just flicking a bit of ink onto it. And over here, same thing like that. And then we're gonna add in one more color. So this is the soft succulent, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Now we're going to bring in the alcohol. So this time we're spritzing our dots and we're just going to layer that onto the paper just like that. So instead of getting a solid palette, now you're getting that kind of modeled palette. So this is where we're going to bring in a new to me, well, new to the catalog um, punch. And we're going to layer this inside. Well, I'm gonna do it this way because it's hard to press otherwise. And, oh, that's not, I forget always that this is a border punch and not a, oh, Lindsay. Okay, oh, oh my gosh, it's fine, right? Is it fine? I don't know if it's fine. Come on. Do you guys ever do this? Do you ever do it on camera? That's the question. Okay, come on, play nice. It's Friday, don't be mean. Okay, there we go. Don't do what I do. It's probably because it was a little bit wet actually. So there you can see we've got the modeled trees, right? And you can just go ahead and layer that a couple of times. So I'm gonna do that with that one too. So you've got that look to your trees. Okay, let's show you the finished project. There was a lot of steps there for such a simple looking card, but it's so worth it. So this is your episode 63 PYP card. And I love that, I've got your back. So here you can see is where we used the spots and we added the alcohol to make the tree background. Here we've got our dots that we've transferred with our clear block. And then here we've used the clear block for the watercolor palette. So I'll show you the three cards one more time. So we've got our PYP card. We have the, um, the tie dye palette and then we have using the clear block as a stamp. So if you're thinking to yourself, Lindsay, why don't I have these products? Go to my online store and you can shop for them there. Remember, you can get a 10% discount if you buy all of the blocks at the same time. I'm gonna turn you around just for a second so we can speak face to face. All right, okay, and then I'm just gonna do this because I don't have to hold it. Hi. Um, yeah, so I have just one more day. If you place an order that's $60 or more before the shipping and tax, you are going to receive a class in the mail from me for free. It's all the pre-cut supplies for five different projects. All you need is basic adhesive supplies as well as a greeting set and uh, a neutral ink pad. And I'm gonna show you a sneak peek because I've got them all designed. Are you guys ready? Don't tell anybody. 
Okay, we're working with ink on this one too. I'm really inspired by color right now. Okay, so here's the first one. Oh, yes. Here's the second one. Oh my gosh, those little plants are so, so cute. I just love them. Here's the third one. This is using one of the techniques that we learned today. And this one was inspired by a demonstrator on my team named Shada May. And uh, I got a swap card that had a, a similar kind of idea to it. So I, I liked that a lot. Here we have another one. And this one is using our ombre um, paper, the specialty paper. And then finally, oh, look at this. Yeah, just a little bit of the sand and seed collection that is retiring in just a couple of days. So yes, um, my, all of my friends who placed orders that are $60 or more will be receiving this kit in the mail sometime next week. So you should have it by the end of the month. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, do you guys, are you gonna pull out those clear blocks now? Oh, I wanted to tell you too, cleaning them. So if you find that your clear blocks are starting to look a little grungy, um, I found that just like dish soap in the sink can really help. And then pull out your glass cleaner, so Windex or whatever, and give them a spray and then polish them with a soft cloth. Soft cloth. Oh, you think I've dipped into the Prosecco already. Soft cloth. And then you've got polished blocks. And it's a really good idea to clean them every once in a while. It'll help your sticking with your stamps better. It's just also more sanitary. So um, I would highly recommend if you haven't thrown them in you can do that. I've also heard that you can throw them in your dishwasher, although I haven't tried that. So don't quote me on that. Maybe only try one. <laughs> but I, I would think that it should be fine, right? Because I think they're acrylic. So yeah. All right, my friends. Happy Friday. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, feel free to share this video with your friends. It's always a compliment for me to see that you've shared it. Um, I am going to continue getting your projects in the mail for next week and I look forward to stamping with you again soon. Have fun crafting. Bye for now.